guys, what's up? It's me, Kenny Roy, and I am starting a brand new series here on KennyRoy.com where I talk to inspiring and amazing artists that are doing stuff around the web and in our industry. Today, I am going to be joined by the amazing Samantha Youssef. I actually, she doesn't know this, she doesn't know this, but I've been basically stalking her on Facebook uh, this entire time, and I, uh, I've just been looking at her stuff, and uh, it's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to finally meet her, so I'm not going to dilly-dally too long. Uh, let's uh, all give a warm welcome and say hello to Samantha. Samantha, how's it going? Good, thanks. I didn't know the Facebook thing. Yeah, I know. I said that to kind of throw you off right now. I didn't, I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> um, so, Samantha, you've got some pretty uh, awesome things going on right now. Um, uh, primarily right now we're going to talk about your um, awesome Kickstarter. I mean, it's already super successful. You've got 10 days to go. Um, the Yusef Drawing Syllabus. you want to just jump right in and start telling us about that book? Yeah, sure. Um, so it's uh, so it's the use of drawing syllabus because in the future it will be a series of three books. Okay. Um, yeah. But they're all separate, like on their own. This one focuses on posing and movement and also design, like silhouette and uh, like, yeah, figure posing design. So um, how to get the most from your poses. And it's based on, because I come from a 2D feature animation background, so it's based on a lot of the stuff that you know, as an animator that I learned drawing techniques that I learned, but it's also based on my experience um, with 3D and mostly because I come from a dance background. So all of the concepts of gesture and posing are actually taken from what I was trained to observe as a dancer, which is why it mm -hmm. translates really well for a lot of animators or 3D artists. A lot, a lot of people don't know where, like, where you come from. So like, um, why don't you give, give us a little bit of a background on like yourself as an artist, maybe. Okay. Um, well, I'm. Uh, I come from. Uh, I worked at Disney in 2D. That's uh, where I had most of my. I guess. You know, that's all you have to say for a lot of people to just be like <laughs> sold. That's it. I'm on yeah. board. And and it seems like from you know. I mean, you're already at fifty eight thousand um, of your forty thousand dollar goal. I mean, obviously a lot of people um, have have jumped on board. But uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. So uh, 2D oh, no, at Disney and. That's, like, that's um, the main thing. It's like nothing else matters. I guess. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sure. uh, <laughs> and then, uh, and then I worked uh, a little bit at um, Ubisoft in cinematics. I got to direct a cinematic short film there, and that was kind of fun. It was my first time working in you know games, so it was a bit different for me coming from feature. But I really enjoyed, like. I mean, I wasn't working in game; it was cinematics. But it was really cool to see that world and yeah. like I always played games but to see how they were created was kind of cool too did you find and, when you went there I mean when you we transitioned to like games I mean it's a lot of the same I mean drawing is drawing though right isn't it a lot of the same like yeah. techniques yes and I remember my interview where you know um because they actually they they I wasn't sure if I wanted to go you know go work at Ubisoft I just left Disney and um and I had been asked by the animation team to come in. Like, they took me out for lunch. They were really cool about it. So they were awesome. But then when you have to go in and you have this meeting with HR and they're trying to talk to you about, you know, your contract. And the guy was like, well, you know, you've never worked in games before. So, uh, you know, it was a bit like, he was a bit like skeptical or critical about it. But then you get in there and you're like, it's the same. Like, the animation principles are the same. Body mechanics are the same. Good poses are the same. Storytelling is the same. Performance is the same. Yeah. So yeah. I don't really... I still don't really see, I mean, there's certain, if you're working on in-game stuff, there's certain constraints, you know, that you have to work within for it to, you know, be responsive to the player and integrate into right. the engine and stuff. But I was working in cinematic, so I yeah, didn't. So, it, so, I mean, that inspired, uh, this is called a syllabus, so it's going to be part of a series. And the syllabus is, I mean, that sort of, uh, the name itself kind of means that this is like, you know, a, a, a method that you can follow, a workflow, as it were, for uh, improving your drawing? Or is this like a start-to-finish workflow of, of, of how to draw? It's it's like it's yeah it's both it's a it's a start like Ooh, I don't both see two for the price of one people. It's like, well, it's, it's, it's definitely like it's a how you know it's how to approach a drawing and I go through a progressive system that mm -hmm. starts from getting the most important information into like you know longer studies and and sort of a way that I expect like when I'm teaching that I expect people to work. Mm -hmm. That's also a way that is more flexible to more rigid. You know, like there's no point going into the structural part of the drawing if you haven't established like what's directing the forms first and stuff like that so so there is a it's a set way but at the same time I don't really believe in um, like 
I, I, you know, I'm one of those like tools, not rules people kind of thing. Like it's, it's. Oh my um, God. I am so stealing that <laughs> phrase. Tools, not rules. It's mine now. You just lost it. That's going to be on the front page of Kennyroy.com for, for, for like the rest of the year. Tools, not rules. All right. I, I we're going to have to end this interview right now because. I, I, I gotta update my yeah, website. there can't be any proof of that. Me stealing this. <laughs> I'm sorry I interrupted. No, well, actually, that you kind of gave me uh, my follow-up is, will people who are um, artists in any any form of art, any form of visual art, um, benefit from from you know from the syllabus? Yes, I mean I, I can say that just from my classes because people that have taken my classes have been I've had like bronze sculptors take my class and wrote to me and said it completely improved their figurative sculpture. I've had fine artists and, you know, obviously mostly I get animators, but I've had like concept artists, illustrators. I've even had riggers come in because they wanted to understand riggers. riggers. And, and, uh, and we don't need them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who cares about them? No, no, they're vitally important. No, I see how that makes sense. I mean, obviously, I mean, I'm just looking at some of the drawings that you have here on your, on your, on your page. And, and obviously just the, the, uh, the improvement and just like understanding how this form is put together i mean it, obviously it's applicable to rigging what's the craziest um artist like that you had like come in like any interpretive dancers or i, I don't know like uh i, I don't know thoughts? yeah yeah artist. Uh, well i mean the one that stands out for me was the bronze sculpture yeah. guy because he did these like kind of dega like sculptures you yeah, know like yeah. huge bronze sculptures and i was like wow it's, it was interesting to to work with them um so i'd probably say that because i get a lot of like comic book artists and like industry artists so that's never a surprise and then of course like yeah, there was yeah. this one rigger that came like he came in to take my classes who works in the industry here in Montreal because he wanted to be able to create really organic rigs. So he wanted to understand drawing and 2D animation and which I really respected. I was like, that's really cool that, right. you know, um, so uh, those, the, yeah, the rigor and the bronze sculpture stood out for me just because, you know, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't. Um, yeah, I'm sure you weren't expecting him to, to, to show up that day. Yeah. What's the, if, if I'm going to, um, if, if I'm going to improve, I mean, you started talking about like um, vital information, like right off the bat. Uh, and so if I'm going to improve my drawing, what is what is that vital information? Can you give us like a little snippet of like what that what that is in the beginning of the book? Yeah, like one of the things that I think is I wouldn't say it's unique, but kind of unique is um, like a con I, I teach the line of action as a dancer's like what a dancer would look for as their line. Mm. So mm. a lot of people in 2D, for example, you could put the line of action on the outside of the figure. You know, like you get like a bend like this and they get these nice lines across the back and they're like, that's my line of action. Yeah. Or some people put the line of action through the pose, but it's not really directly linked to the forms. It's just kind of a direction. Yeah. And mm. so that never, like first, it, it can work for certain graphic 2D stuff, but if you're doing like, like I always worked on the more like, uh, main characters at Disney, you know, not the the sidekicks. So I had to do structural drawings that still felt right. alive, and and so I feel like that concept worked for me, and it translates better for three D animators because they can't make a line of action on the outside of the pose. I mean, sometimes right. you can, but so um, so I use how a dancer would find a line, which is actually it's like it's invisible. You right. know, you train your whole life to see it in a mirror, but it actually is directly linked to the forms in your body. Mm. So that's, I think, one of the things that, and that's the first thing that I'll go for. Like in five seconds, you find this line, but because I directly link it to these forms, then basically in five seconds, you've got your pose because it's specific where that line is. And so everything can be built around that. So if you don't even have the model anymore, in mm. five, like if you, you have to put that line in the right place and yeah. it, means, it means something. So right. um, it's not like it's completely unique because we do line of action but I'm very I'm very thorough with how I like I spend like 30 pages breaking it down okay that so that does sound that sounds pretty pretty damn thorough <laughs> um, um, so let's I mean obviously look at this this page I mean it's, it's you're obviously doing fantastically I'm sure these are you know and, and congratulations on getting featured that that's a real uh, that's a real big thing um, so we're into stretch goal territory I take it um, tell me about um, a little bit of what you're trying to uh, do with these stretch goals 
Well, the stretch goals, basically the first stretch goal um, I was going to offer is that I would take people in groups, like they can work out, you know, offering different time slots for, for all the backers so that they find something that works for them and give a free three-hour class that basically demonstrates the entire first book, you know, like taking poses, taking examples and going right through the process for them and they can ask any questions and um, so having like a class that, that um, breaks everything breaks everything down for them. So normally I teach the class over like a 10 week period. So this would be, it would be something I do post have their having received the book. So they right. could have the book, practice it, and then get to be there and ask questions and, and watch me demo it. And then the second uh, stretch goal, it would, it's for a higher mark because um, uh, I think you have American prices there. So it would probably come to about 80,000 US or something. Yes. Um, and uh, that would be where I'd actually give a separate chapter. It'll be sent separately, probably as a digital format, but print possibly as well, depending on how much I can afford it. Sure. And it would be specifically because this book is really about, like it's kind of like a body mechanics and understanding figure drawing and what to pull from for your work. Mm -hmm. But this would be showing examples of like how I would apply it to character poses, like specifically like now that we have this language, what am I using to tell the story of the pose more to exaggerate it and push it specifically for character, right. like exaggerated character poses and stuff. What what has been your experience writing this book? I mean, has there have there been ups and downs like with the book itself, or or has it been smooth sailing? I know that's not the answer because there's it's, really, <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of work. Yeah, it's a ton of work. Oh, I've been work. working on it for two years. Yeah, that's about right. Um, and it, like obviously not full time, but every moment that I had, and and on top of it, I've been teaching this program. It's evolved over seven years, so. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, at least teaching a course, like putting it into a course has allowed me to create a structural outline for the book. So it was almost like I knew what my chapters had to be, mm -hmm. but yeah, putting it into writing form when you're used to drawing over people's work, like, um, you know, working directly with people, even online, like even if it's CG poses, like I'm always drawing on people's stuff while I'm talking to them. So to put it in words that I'm not going to be there, but try to communicate it. Yeah. That was actually really hard to like... Yeah put it all together make sure that all the examples are there that it's thorough that and I went to go and work with this team of people in um, near Boston that they they do this amazing model resource photography where they shoot the models from 360 degrees like great lighting yeah. great models and we got a dancer yeah I, saw, I, I saw that here where is it um, the bottom. The, yeah these these um I mean, it's so hard to find fantastic, you know, you know, uh, photography like this. This looks really good. This stuff. Yeah, they, they are amazing. Like, they, and they were wonderful to work with. Mm -hmm. And we directed everything so that there's like, so that there's references, like, because there'll be my drawings all through the books. But I wanted people to see it, you know, so that animators, when they're looking at reference or when people are looking at a figure, that it's not just my diagrams, but yes. they can actually see where I'm coming from. Yeah. And so, um, so getting that done, directing that shoot, like. I've just been putting, yeah, I've been putting a lot, I, but I want it to be the best I can do, you know, like I don't yeah. want to take shortcuts with it. I gotta say, I mean, just looking at what you have so far and, and, and you know, having stalked you for, an, you know, uh, <laughs> Uh, a I'm good a good amount of time. <laughs> I uh, you know I I, I know we we can expect fantastic things. So people have ten days left. Um, looks like um, looks like you're. I, I think you're going going to hit at least that first stretch goal. So um, you know people have ten days to get onto this uh, this successful campaign. And um, I wish you the best of luck. You don't need it. You're doing great. Um, thank you for uh, coming and uh, and speaking today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so it. much for inviting me yeah, and for stopping me. I'm so honored because oh. I always loved your work. So thanks. Well. <laughs> All right, we can talk after. And by the way, I just I just wanted to say one more time, thank you so much for letting me steal uh, tools, not rules. It is I now just... copyright <laughs> KennyRoy.com. So um, anyway, I'll sign off with that today instead of my normal rock on. Thank you one more time. <laughs> Thank you one more time, Samantha. And uh, I'm Kenny Roy. I will see you guys later. And remember, as always, tools, not rules.